civil rights leaders are hailing criticism that Barack Obama is a patrician snob as a breakthrough for African Americans. In an op-ed in the New York Times, historian Dr. Robert Woodson wrote, 20 years ago, it would have been inconceivable that the news would portray a black man as out of touch with the working class. Dr. King's dream is now a reality. The Onion has existed before the modern internet and will likely still exist when we finally form a collective consciousness. The media company was founded in 1988, and in 1996, The Onion began publishing online. In 2007, The Onion News Network was started and began publishing content to YouTube. Now, most people are aware of The Onion's satirical articles. In fact, if you're watching this video, you've probably done a terrible essay or two from high school if, like me, your education was terrible, underfunded, and American. But there's much more to The Onion than facetious articles calling out George W. Bush or hilarious articles mocking real-world happenings. The Onion is a fantastic demonstration of speaking truth to power, maintaining a semi-cohesive ideology through humor, and generally attempting to actually understand the subject matter being joked about. This is Anna Stevenson, author of Actually, He's a Boy, a how-to manual for parenting an effeminate male child. Good to see you this morning, right, Anna. Thanks for having me, I'm Jan. actually very excited to talk to you today because when my nephew, Derek, mm -hmm. turned eight, mm -hmm. he started acting giggly all the time. My brother is beside himself. He's afraid to let him out of the house, let alone on a night when everybody's dressing up. All right, well, a lot of parents feel that way, yeah. Jim. But unless you lock him in the house, you run the risk that the lady boy will sneak out on his own, dressed yes. as a ballerina. And you'll find him pirouetting on somebody's front porch with the whole neighborhood watching. Oh, the worst nightmare. But the good news is, with a little... One of my favorite examples of this is the 2008 video entitled, Is Our Wealth Hurting Africa's Feelings? The title alone is beautiful, but what really makes me love this sketch is the way the dialogue builds onto itself. Each line stepping over the next, as more and more they begin just directly calling out the relationship between Western countries and Africa. There is no hesitation in this sketch to sugarcoat the main intent. It's a joke about imperialism, and that's the amazing part about it. The writers wrote this joke and took a side. There is no famine in Kansas, no uh, a civil war currently happening in New Mexico. But it's, they, it's, they'll, be, they'll be so disappointed and, and, and probably a little angry. They feel like we can do business ventures with other continents. They don't realize nobody's going to trade oil for sticks. You know what? The stick market over there is a complete free fall. Mm -hmm. You know? How many sticks does one person really need? That's the debate that's going on there right now. But the thing is, not telling Africa about the global economy will mean leaving the continent in charge of their own mining and drilling it's operations. You can't do it. You can't Are do it. Are they going to hurt themselves with all that equipment? I think so. I think so. I wouldn't have a problem with uh, introducing Fisher-Price mining tools to sort mm. of like get them started, get them a sense. There's an unflinching nature to this sketch and the onion as a whole. There's the pretext, here are the comedically terrible problems that are happening in the world. There's the joke about the pretext, mocking the very concept of fixing these problems effectively. And then there's the reality that the writers are mocking the real world's problems. The Onion usually does not offer solutions to the series of problems it presents, but it does offer the situation itself to you, a joke that you must face in the context of the world that we live in. We don't want to introduce plumbing and electricity and housing and doorknobs, because that's going to take away what it means to be inherently African. It would be disrespectful. You know? It would it. make it much more difficult to exploit them. Now, let's look at another classic video entitled, Police Say School Shooter Had History of School Shootings, from 2009. This is one of the darker sketches from The Onion, but it's also one of the funniest in my opinion. You can almost smell the development of this video in the wake of one of the many school shootings that have happened in the United States that I don't really have a connection to, besides them being an event that just sort of happens in America. But more to the point, the sketch's intent is clearly to highlight something, something more abstract than a basic explanation of these sketches can really get at. These sketches are distinctly built to call attention to an essentially hilarious inequality. Excuse me, doctor, we've just received some breaking news. Police have just discovered plans that Bobby had made in preparation for another school shooting that he planned to carry out in February. Dr. Loyola, should Bobby Bobby's shooting yesterday be seen as a potential warning sign of that future shooting? Well, possibly, Tracy, but it's important not to jump to conclusions here. Yesterday's shooting may simply have been a cry for help and not an indication that he would become violent again. Wise words, Dr. Loyola. Thank you very much for spending some time with us this morning here on Today Now. 
And stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to be talking to a teacher from Olinda High School who knew Bobby for three years and was shot by him 11 times. Stay with us. This brings me to yet another great video from The Onion, this one being from 2011 entitled Al-Qaeda Populating the U.S. with Peaceful Decoy Muslims. This video looks like an average segment of American TV. An expert appears on a show and is allowed to spew unquestioned and violent rhetoric against a minority group, and the interviewer pushes them to say more. Even as the xenophobic rhetoric increases, the interviewer simply continues to get excited. The interviewer's questions poke and edge the expert further to say more wild, fallacious claims, even as they reach mind-breaking levels of ridiculum. While I'm talking about this scene, I also really want to praise the actor who plays Shelby, the author of the book Muslims, Muslims Everywhere. I think they just do a fantastic job, like everyone else on the show, giving the story to you. There's just so much great work being done here. Muslims, they're just like you and me. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason. It wouldn't be fair for the police to stop and question every Muslim that's out in public the mm -hmm. way Shelby Cross is suggesting, because ooh, that would just be racist. Yeah, well, that, that doubt is exactly what Al-Qaeda is counting on. So, so, Shelby, what can we do? Well, if you see a Muslim, I say just walk straight up to them and under your breath just say, I'm on to you. Oh. Okay? I don't care if it's a man, a woman, or an adorable little brown baby jihadist in a stroller. Oh, okay. But Shelby, you have also made it clear to your viewers that these decoy Muslims can be so sneaky yeah. that sometimes you can't even tell they're Muslim. Oh, yeah, no. As They'll, 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 they'll hide as Mexicans, oh. as Puerto Ricans, oh. as, uh, as Vietnamese. I mean, mm -hmm. there's absolutely mm -hmm. nothing that would let you know that they were, in fact, secretly Muslim. Now, if, if a Guatemalan or a Mexican ever comes up to me, I just cuff them. I pat him down, and then I look right in the eyes and I say, hey, where are you hiding your Koran, Ahmed? So, so you have to be on your guard While we're on the subject of terrorism, Muslims, the onion, let's check out the video entitled 9-11 Conspiracy Theories Ridiculous, says Al-Qaeda. This sketch is great, and I'll let it speak for itself before I get to the real topic of the video. Most of the mainstream media, they're just too afraid to even have me on, so thank you. Also joining us is Omar Al-Farouk of Al-Qaeda. He's an outspoken critic of what he calls Gerard's 9-11 conspiracy theory. Yes, Michael, uh, I assure you that is all this book is, is complete nonsense. Mr. Gerard, how did you arrive at the conclusions in your book? W where are the facts Well, through here? scientific examination of ground zero. For example, the melted core. I mean, that oh, was definitely evidence that there were thermite bombs that were used in bringing down those buildings. I can assure you, we did not use thermite bombs. I did the research myself. It would not have worked. We flew an enormous airplane into a building. Okay, I think it is obvious what caused the building to crumble. Why it are you is, being so close-minded to this, sir? If more how people would you like the courage. it? If you spent, you know, two months in a, a mountain cave, uh, sleeping on rocks, planning something really special, uh, only to have someone take the credit away from you. Say, oh no, you don't the deserve the credit for it. It, 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 it. The Onion writing team consists of writers who understand two things about humor more so than most. Darkness and truth. They utilize their understanding of these concepts when attacking controversial subjects. But why is this? I had to try and figure out what it was that made this entertainment company so woke. So I read more into the company, and by this I mean I dug deeper into Wikipedia and then followed the box numbers and I saw this. I realize it's only like an innocuous joke, but it's a pretty good joke for one million dollars in production value. I can't say The Onion is particularly morally guided, whatever that means, but I can say that their humor plants them well above your average edgy take on modernity. From what I can tell, the company is actually fairly small, with Wikipedia listing only 140 or so employees. I can only imagine that this is a fairly diverse group of people who are open to learning about others and wishing for a better world. As for now, I hope future edgelords take note of The Onion's lasting examples and create hilarious content. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I try to put out videos twice a month, but it's easier to be consistent with food on the table, so consider becoming a patron or donating to my Ko-fi. Patrons get access to my progressing content and can ask me Q&A questions, which I should be able to get in the end of my next video if I get enough questions. Until next time, have a good one.
Okay, but they'd be dead, Shelby. Yeah, but a, a dead man is the only man you can trust. You know that. Rule yeah. number one. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Shelby. <laughs>